The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, The Back Door. It had been a sensational trial, also a very strange one. If the men in the press room agreed on nothing else, they were unanimous in the opinion that the case of the people versus Edward Crane was the most amazing courtroom drama Hartley County had ever seen. The mere fact that now, after 51 days in court, after 16 hours of waiting for the jury to bring in the verdict, these men in the press room were still fascinated, still discussing the pros and cons. That was testimony enough. Okay, okay, but I tell you what, I got a feeling. Yeah, what? Edward Crane's gonna lose this case. <laughs> well, make yourself some dough. You're betting eight to five he gets himself acquitted. I know my hunch sounds crazy, but the whole thing was crazy from the first. Edward Crane, the biggest criminal lawyer in the business, hooked on a murder charge. And on top of that, acting as his own defense. Yeah, that part don't make sense, does it? Nah, it never did. No, but that doesn't mean they'll convict him. Plenty of guys who walk in the street today only because Crane pulled a rabbit out of the hat at the right time. There weren't any rabbits in this one, Ward. Funny, but it almost looked as if the guy weren't trying, as if he wanted to be convicted. Yes, it had been a strange one, this story that was coming to its climax after 51 days in the courtroom. And although the reporters, remembering Edward Crane's past triumphs, had freely predicted surprising developments, not one of them could guess even a fraction of the truth. The truth was that on that October night, some weeks before the opening of the trial, Edward Crane had walked into his wife's attic studio with a plan, a plan that had to be tried on for size. Good evening, Ruth. Oh, now, don't bother me, Edward. I'm very busy. I want to talk to you. Now, just a minute, Edward. You know very well that my... I said I wanted to talk to you, Ruth. All right. What is it? Perhaps we'd better sit down. Perhaps we'd better not. I have a painting to finish, dear, and I see by the woebegone expression that I've come to know so well during the past few months that you're about to ask me again to consider a divorce. Now, just a minute, Ruth. So I'll save us both a lot of time by giving you the usual answer. No. That's not quite all of it this time, Ruth. Oh? I... I don't believe I've made it clear why I want a divorce. Must we go into that? You see, I think I know that vanity of yours, Ruth. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to see it hurt. Go on. I'm hanging on every word. Ruth, I'm in love with another woman. Oh, for heaven's sake, Edward, that. What? What do you mean? If you're going to tell me about Louise Salander, forget it. You... You know about it? (laughs) Of course, darling. Don't be a little boy. How could you expect to keep a thing like that quiet in a town like this? But I thought Shall I... Shall I give you a case history? You met her last June at the Jenkins trial. Took her out for the first time on the 8th of July to the shadows over in Brookridge. Oh, out of town, of course, but not quite far enough. Since then, you've been meeting her at least once a week at Leonardi's on uh, conference nights. 
How long have you known about this? Almost as long as you have. Why? Why, I don't know. I, I... Well, then, let's drop it, hmm? Now, I've been a good girl and listened to you, dear. Suppose you run downstairs to your evening paper and let me work. Why are you doing this, Ruth? Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Louise. She's young and pretty. There's a happy life ahead of her with someone. Maybe I just don't want to see her make a mistake. And you are a mistake, Edward, a frightful mistake. Thank you. Nothing at all. Ruth. Hmm? Do you still want to take that trip? To Canada? Yes. Certainly. I've been telling you for ages how I've wanted to do some landscapes. Yes, but I didn't want you to go until I had a chance to discuss this thing with you. Now that we understand one another... Of course. Now you'll be happy to see me leave. Exactly. I'll be gone for seven or eight months, you know. I know. Hiding out at Renee's Lodge in Manitoba for three months. And then west to lose yourself in the glories of the Canadian Rockies. You've been reading my mind. I know you pretty well, Ruth. Perhaps. But you know Louise as well, Redward. She's apt to change her mind. Take away the secret meetings and the glamorous restaurants, and you're just as monotonous as the next one. You know, maybe I ought to visit Louise. You'll do nothing of the kind. Well, it was just a thought. When when can you be ready to leave on your trip? Tomorrow night. All right. But there's one thing I insist on. You must tell no one that you're leaving. What? Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Why, I'll have to cancel all my appointments. I'm addressing the art I'm center. sorry, but I have a very good reason for insisting. Well, that's very strange. Why? Well, well, I'm afraid people might misinterpret the reason for your going. They know we aren't getting along too well. And there's your precious reputation. Very well, Edward. Now do run downstairs and let me finish my work. <laughs> Yes, Edwards, you tried the plan for size, and it fits. And somehow you're relieved. Your experience as a trial lawyer has made you a master at talking of one thing and thinking of another. And at the moment you were proposing Ruth's trip to Canada, your mind was on something else. Somewhere in the huge, imposing edifice known as criminal law. Big and terrifying from the front. But with back doors here and there open to escape. One back door, one loophole in particular that will allow you to murder your wife and go free. On the night after Ruth leaves for Canada, you decide it's time to call Louise to set her mind at rest. I can't help it, Edward. I love you so. We simply have to be patient, dear. It isn't easy. You know that. Of course. But I'm going to take care of it, Louise. There's a way out? Just trust me, that's all. No matter what happens. Oh, I do trust you. But I don't understand, Edward. I thought Now, please, you... don't worry anymore, Louise. Just leave everything to me. With the prologue of The Back Door, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, a message to drivers. To get the tops in performance from your car, you naturally want the gasoline that's tops in quality. And to be sure you're getting the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. You see, mileage, yes, mileage is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. After all, the only way any gasoline can put more thrilling performance into your car is by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you see proof of it on your speedometer in mileage, the very thing Signal Gasoline is famous for. And that's why we're so proud of Signal's good mileage, which has made Signal Gasoline known from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. And it's why we say... To be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, just remember two things. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the whistler.
So you've made up your mind, Edward, and murder is the only answer. A new kind of murder, of course. An ingenious, audacious variety that can't fail because it assumes at the outset that there'll be an arrest, a trial, that the law will run its course. Yes, Edward. You know that when the time comes, that back door will be open behind you, that secret back door to freedom and a new life with the woman you love. You begin the next morning with a call to the neighborhood plumber, a curious, gossipy little man named Potter. You purposely seem nervous now, a little wild-eyed as you go to the front door a few minutes later to admit him. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Potter. Uh, right this way, please. You say you smell gas, huh? Uh, just noticed it this morning. Where are we going? Well, the uh, kitchen. No, no, no. Better take a look at the basement first. The basement? Oh, well, sure. Why not? No, 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 not the basement. Uh, I think it's in the kitchen. Oh, well, okay. We'll check it after I look at the pipes downstairs. I tell you, I... What's happened to you, anyway? Oh, nothing. It's nothing at all. You look so pale. You're all covered with ashes. Oh, I, I... I was down at the furnace, uh, burning some old rubbish. <laughs> Looks like you were inside it. I needed a little cleaning. And yeah, I... How come? Your wife just had me clean a week ago. Oh, say, by the way, Mr. Crane, uh, where is the missus? Oh, well, she... Mrs. Crane is off on a long trip. She left the other night. Oh. Well, are we going downstairs now? No, I'd rather not. Might be uh, dangerous, Mr. Crane. I said we're not going into the cellar. Is that clear? Well, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe not. Come on. I'll look at the kitchen stove. Hello? Louise? Oh, Edward. I'm sorry I didn't see you yesterday, darling. I'd like to make it up to you tonight. Oh, really, Edward, do you think we should, the way things are? People are starting to talk. Oh, I'd give anything if we could be together forever, darling. But now I... Well, I don't want to embarrass you. Oh, that's just the point. Let them talk. I'm tired of dodging the issue, meeting you in back alleys and out-of-town restaurants. It's high time we brought it out in the open. But, darling... I mean it. We're not going to Brookridge tonight, Louise. We're having dinner right downtown at Pierre's. I'll pick you up at 7. Now, listen, darling, Now, that's I... all there is to it now, Louise. I insist. All right, Edward. 7 o'clock. <laughs> Well, what's the matter, darling? I don't know. You haven't touched your steak. I guess I'm not hungry. <laughs> Is that the only reason? Look at them, Edward. Staring at us like a flock of vultures. Oh, no. It's your imagination. Oh, I wish it were. I know what they're saying. They'll be all over town tomorrow. So what? Maybe a little gossip will convince Ruth that Edward. She... Huh? Please. I don't want to talk about Ruth. I don't want to hear her name again, ever. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Louise. So am I. Come on, now, let's go. But, Louise... Don't you see, darling? I can't stand this another minute. I'm sorry, Edward. All right, Louise. Let's go. You wish you could tell Louise how it's going to be, Edward. But you know you must be practical. There's only one time for that after it's over. After the hue and the cry and the drama of the trial and the retreat through the back door. So you take her arm now as the two of you leave the restaurant. Note with satisfaction the smug faces, the staring eyes, the heads together over tables in the far corners of the room. You don't have to hear to know what they're saying. It's moving now, Edward. A last glance at Henry, the bartender, tells you that even he's part of it, too. There, 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 that's him now. Sam Potter says Crane there has a case of jitters that make New Year's morning look like a sarsaparilla hangover. Oh? Well, maybe there's another reason. Look, Crane had been down in the cellar fussing with the furnace. Wait a minute, Bill. You mean that... Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe his wife is away on a trip. Who knows? <laughs> Did you see them, Richard, sneaking out? They know they've attracted attention. Hmm? Oh, forget it, Myra. I've seen Crane around the city hall. He seems to be all right. Yes, all right, seems to be running around with another woman. And where's his wife? How do you know that oh, he hasn't... Oh, uh, stop uh, dreaming, Myra, and eat your soup. Mm-hmm. 
It's building solidly, isn't it, Edward? With each passing day, you can almost feel the wall of criticism and suspicion rising around you, closing in, almost hear the words of your accusers, like the people at the art center. I can't understand Ruth Crane going away without telling us. Well, she'd promised to conduct a special lecture on landscapes. Do you suppose that something's happened to her? Happened? Like what? Oh, I, I uh, don't know, but she's always been so reliable, so punctual with her appointments. It makes one wonder. Sam! No, he's bothering you, Miss Harris. Oh, no. I always expect that when I call the plumber. Uh, Sam, I came down to ask you about Mrs. Crane. Oh? I've been making a dress for her, and she was coming in for the second sitting, and I haven't heard a word. Um, I don't figure she'll ever be in, Mrs. Harris. What? A couple of weeks ago, I was over at the Crane place. Talked to Mr. Crane. She wasn't home? Well, I didn't talk to her. Let's put it that way. I don't understand you, Sam. I had to have a look at the furnace during the call. Mr. Crane acted awful peculiar about it. For what reason? Well, when I tell you, you'll probably say I ought to stick to my plumbing, Mrs. Harris. But I think Mrs. Crane is in that house right now. You do? Only she... She's dead. <gasps> she's buried in the cellar something. Sam, you really believe that? Mm, I certainly do. Well, then there should be an investigation, a police investigation. Sam, I'm going to see about it right away. Yes, Edward, the tongues are wagging all over town. But you're far from the usual frightened suspect as you learn about it. Watch the snowball begin to roll. It's exactly as you figured it, isn't it, Edward? First, the mutterings ripening into suspicion. The two thriving weeks of suspicion finally materializing into something more concrete. Well, Louise, come in, darling. Oh, Edward, it's terrible. The whole town's against us. <laughs> against us, Louise? For just being together, I guess, for being in love. Edward, there's a man on his way here from the district attorney's office. Really? They... They don't believe Ruth went away. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't matter what they think. But... What will you tell them? The truth. Edward. Now, Louise, stop worrying. Oh... Edward, darling. Edward, did someone... I told you not to worry. It's all right. You'd better answer, Edward. Yes, of course. Oh, hello, Bennett. Mr. Crane, this is an official call. I was sent over to have a look around. What's it all about? I'm sorry, I can't discuss it with you. Here. Your handkerchief? Yeah, you better use it. The lady's lipstick is all over your face. Now, see here, Bennett. You can't come busting in Skip here. Skip it. I've got a warrant. I'd like to have a look in your cellar. What are you talking about? There's nothing... I'll about. decide that, Crane. Come on, let's go down there. Well, just what are these? What? Why, they're, they're buttons. Uh, they're from an old painter, Smart. Your wife's? Yes. You see, uh, I cleaned up her studio just after she went away. Uh, afterwards, I burned the rubbish in here. Uh -huh. uh. What about this, Crane? Is this some rubbish, too? Why, oh, yes. That's a piece of bone. And where did it come from? Well, Mrs. Crane is of the realist school. She, she used it in the painting of still life. You can show us that painting? Why... I know she didn't like it when she finished. I'm afraid it's been destroyed. I see. This is going to be a little difficult, Mr. Crane. You uh, probably know the talk that's been going on around town. Well, I'm afraid we can't ignore it any longer. What kind of talk? People around here seem pretty convinced you murdered your wife. Why, why that's, that's... And a report from a man I've had checking on you for the past week makes me think they're right. I'm going to have to place you both under arrest. Both? You and Louise Selander. And there it is, Edward, the final official accusation. The answer to the weeks of suspicion, 
The gossip and the weeks that follow move even more swiftly. From the indictment by the grand jury to the return of a true bill. The clamor for a quick trial and the one startling announcement you make. The statement that stuns your colleagues brings one of them hurrying to your side. Five minutes. Thanks. Well, hello, Waverly. Edward, what's it all about, this ridiculous decision to handle your own case? Can you think of a better criminal lawyer? But it's suicide. Look, we'd like to help you. I'll save you some time, Waverly. My mind's made up. I'm handling the defense myself. As a matter of fact, they're letting me talk to my co-defendant, Miss Sullender, in just a few minutes. So, if you'll excuse me. All right, Edward. Have it your way. Louise. Edward, it's all so, all so horrible. They're saying I was the reason you... What does that matter? I didn't kill Ruth. You believe that, don't you? Of course. Well, Louise, you're not certain, are you? Darling, all I know is that I love you terribly. It's going to be all right. Remember that. No matter what happens... It's going to be all right. If it please the court, Mr. Foreman and gentlemen of the jury, the state will prove that on or about the 15th day of December of last year, the defendants Edward Crane and Louise Sullender with malice aforethought, did he peck the brutal death of his wife, Ruth? Our witnesses will establish beyond the... That's right, I was checking the plumbing. And Mr. Crane acted mighty peculiar the whole time I was there. Now that's what started... She was supposed to come for a fitting. I never knew her to break an appointment. It wasn't like her at all. Uh, yes, Mrs. Crane often gave her lectures for us at the art center. She had one scheduled for early in January. And then I heard someone say... Objection! That's hearsay, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. And my last words to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The state has not proved anything. It's all conjecture, hearsay, lie! Order! Order! Another outburst, and I'll clear the court. Now, Mr. Crane, will you conclude as quickly as possible? So you conclude, Edward, without pulling the rabbit out of the hat, carefully evading the one vulnerable point in the prosecution's case, the assumption that the bone fragments found in the furnace were all that remained of your wife, Ruth. Yes, Edward, their whole case rests on that assumption. And that's the way you want it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. We find the defendants, Edward Crane and Louise Sellender, guilty on all counts. Oh, no! Bailiff! Bailiff, please. Will you ask the judge if I can have a few minutes with Miss Sellender in private? All right, Crane. I'll make the request. Edward, no, oh, Edward, darling. You tried so hard to convince me. Easy, them. darling. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. But how can you... Shh, not here. I've asked for a few minutes together. I'll tell you in the judge's chambers. But they can't go through with it, Louise. You'll see. They can't go through with it. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, in the interest of public service, Signal Oil Company has asked me to bring you the words of the President of the United States on a subject of importance to every able-bodied man between the ages of 17 and 35. I quote President Truman. Today, the new National Guard gives every man an opportunity to give that personal service to his country and at the same time to advance himself. In National Guard units all over the country, thousands of veterans and other ambitious young men are finding the opportunity to study and learn the things that help them advance in their civilian jobs. They are finding the fellowship that is part and parcel of America. They are participating in a sports and recreation program that keeps them fit. 
and they are receiving the training that helps keep America strong. Those are the words of President Truman. I might add, there are still many opportunities for ex-servicemen to enlist in grade, which means even higher pay, for one night of training per week. Get full information by contacting your local headquarters of the National Guard. And remember, when you join the National Guard, you're benefiting not only your country, but also yourself. And now, back to the Whistler. Yes, Edward, you've reached it at last. The back door. The loophole in the law that will let you and Louise be together. It's over now. All the planning, the long weeks of the trial, and the guilty verdict against you and Louise. You're trembling excitedly as the bailiff comes back to tell you that it's all right. That you can have five minutes together alone. You can tell her now, can't you, Edward? End her fright and grief with a simple explanation of your carefully conceived plan. You turn, take her in your arms as the bailiff withdraws from the room and the door closes. Darling, <laughs> Edward. It's all right, Louise. <laughs> she isn't dead. She isn't dead at all. What do you say? Don't you see? They've convicted us, legally. But Ruth's alive. She's in Canada. I sent her there myself. But you... No, no, wait. Let me tell you the whole thing, Louise. It's to bring us together. She said she'd never give me a divorce, and she wouldn't have. But I got her to go away. I wanted them to convict us. I, I don't understand you, not at all. Look, Ruth's in the Canadian Rockies. She went there after spending three months at a lodge in Manitoba run by a man named Rene. I'm going to have Rene brought here. But, Edward, Don't I... you see? He'll swear she was alive after the time we were supposed to have killed her. With testimony like that, they'll be forced to set us free. And then I'll find Ruth and really get rid of her. That's what I've been working for all the time, dear. After once releasing us, they'd never try to connect us with her disappearance again. Edward! Edward, why didn't you tell me? I couldn't, my dear. It had to be this way. But it won't work. It can't. Why, of course it can. When my witness gets here, we'll have proof. You... You won't have a witness. Edward, you can't. Ruth came to see me the night she was leaving. I killed her, Edward. I killed her. Now we can be together. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman and Virginia Gregg. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by James Earthine, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>